Welcome back to Movie Mo Show. Today we are going to review the comedy drama film, The Angriest Man in Brooklyn. If you like our content don't forget to like and subscribe. We upload multiple times daily. Spoilers ahead. On his way to a doctor's appointment, Henry Altman is stuck in Brooklyn traffic when all of a sudden, a cab strikes his vehicle. He is driven into a frenzy by this, and he attacks the cab driver. Dr. Sharon Gill, Henry's regular physician, with whom she is having an affair, is being covered when she arrives at the Brooklyn hospital. She informs him that he has a brain aneurysm with a bad prognosis after reviewing brain imaging. He bursts, calling Sharon names and demanding to know how long he has to live. Henry persists in asking the question despite her attempts to avoid it. When Sharon sees a magazine cover that states 90 minutes, she becomes frightened and blurts it out. Henry storms off in rage. Sharon understands the repercussions of her actions after speaking with another physician, she will undoubtedly lose her job and her license. She decides to track down Henry and take care of him right now. Henry comes at his family law practice and barges into a client and brother meeting. One responds to his question on what a hypothetical client with 90 minutes to live should do by making one last passionate embrace with his wife. Then, after a hasty return home, Henry finds his estranged wife Bet having an affair with their next-door neighbor. Sharon discovers that Henry's condition is so critical that he might pass away at any moment. When Sharon gets to Henry's workplace, she informs Aaron of his brother's prognosis. He explains to her that Henry used to be a good and content guy, but that he'd become bitter after the passing of his son Peter two years before. Henry continues to stop along the way to repentance, even making an effort to get in touch with his son Tommy who is still alive. He had caused a split by disapproving of his son's decision to become a professional dancer. Making a recording in which he declares his love for Tommy, he loses control midway through and collapses. When Henry wakes up, he heads to the Brooklyn Bridge with the intention of jumping off. When Sharon discovers him there, she apologizes for her earlier actions and acknowledges that she is unsure of when he may pass away. She begs him not to leap, claiming that if he does, her career, and thus, her life, will be finished. Sharon rushes to the river to draw Henry to shore even though he continues to jump off the bridge. He acknowledges that this is his second opportunity and asks her for assistance in making amends with his family. Only 19 minutes remain, he realizes after looking at her watch. The same cab driver that hit Henry earlier that day drives Sharon's cab. The men start to fight, but she uses pepper spray to temporarily blind the driver, and they flee in his taxi. Henry discovers Tommy sitting alone as he drives to the Brooklyn Dancing Academy. Like when Tommy was a young boy, they start to dance. Henry tells Sharon that he does not want to know when he will pass away, he only wants to know that he would try to live a better life and that they can both find pleasure after sharing this time with his son. Then, tired, he falls to his knees on her shoulder. After being admitted to the hospital, Henry is given an additional eight days to live, allowing him to spend quality time with his family. Bet, Tommy, Aaron, and Sharon are there on a ferry celebrating Henry's life and scattering his ashes on the East River one year after his passing. They are told by the cruise ship's captain that it is against the law, but they reprimand him in Henry's honor. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.